it's consisting of five probiotic bacteria, basically a consortium of bacteria that is designed to address the root cause of the bad breath as opposed to uh, the mints and gums and mouthwashes of the world that just mask the bad breath. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. We are following up on Indie Bio Demo Day. We now have Oralta in the studio. I'm really excited to talk to Kishore and Patrick, the co-founders. What's up, guys? Good, good. How are you Remember to bring, bring that. Good, how are you doing, good. Alan? <laughs> Thanks for coming on to the show. Thanks for having us. I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, this is really important stuff. I'm really excited because it's actually probably one of the most relatable, applicable companies. Uh, right there in the daily use of people's lives. So uh, Oralta, uh, and we'll get a little bit into your histories and what got you here. Uh, Oralta, a fresh breath probiotic. So give us, give us a quick taste of the of like fresh breath probiotics and then we'll go to history and then we'll get to the more nuance later. But give us that, fre that little taste. Yeah, so the actual taste of the tablet is a slight uh, minty flavor. Um, it's consisting of uh, five probiotic bacteria, basically a consortium of bacteria that is designed to address the root cause of the bad breath as opposed to uh, the mints and gums and mouthwashes of the world that just mask the bad breath. Okay, so th this, th what you just said there, um, I want to unpack later. Um, getting to the roots instead of masking. We'll get to that later. So that's, that's the quick bit on Oralta. Now tell us about you guys. So how do human beings, Indian, German, how do you guys figure out, I'm gonna go into the US, I'm gonna pursue entrepreneurship, I'm gonna do biotech stuff, I'm gonna do breath stuff. How did that story unfold? Um, it's a long story from my side because I started off as a computer science engineer in India, um, and I did my master's and uh, my bachelor's in India, and I flew into the United States to the University of Iowa, Go Hawks, uh, to do my PhD in biomedical informatics. In India, I had a thing where, like, after your, after your 10th grade, you can either choose only math, physics, or chemistry, or biology, physics, or chemistry. And the opportunities for math, physics, and chemistry were much more than biology, physics, and chemistry. But I loved math and biology, and I could not pursue it. So I had to ch take math, physics, and chemistry. And I had this void in me, like I always wanted to do biology. And after I finished my uh, bachelor's in computer science and ma master's in computer science, then I got this, uh, I read this book called Genome, where they talked about how there are new opportunities opening up uh, in the field of biology for computer scientists, where they need a lot of analysts, statisticians, computer programmers to understand the, uh, the genome projects that are happening currently at various research universities at the, uh, at, in the United States. So I applied to a bioinformatics program where I could uh, apply my skills as a computer scientist and apply to biology to understand various health and disease concerns of uh, citizens. So that's, got, that's what uh, helped me to apply to the United States. I did my PhD there. Um, and, and in my PhD, I, I mostly did um, cancer genetics, and cancer bioinformatics, and some basic bioinformatics. And then I got my first graduate from University of Iowa, got my first job again in, uh, in Pioneer Hybrid, which is a plant genetics company. And I was doing plant genetics there. So I made a switch from cancer genetics to plant genetics, or plant bioinformatics. And then I moved to Bayer Crop Science. And that's where my introduction to microbial bioinformatics happened. And that's where I met Patrick too. Uh, and, and Patrick is an excellent uh, scientist. So we kind of, and we both had this entrepreneurial ambitions and mm -hmm. we came up with this idea, but, but Patrick will talk a little bit about how we came up with the actual idea. Uh, but S Patrick is my colleague and a very good friend when we were in uh, Bayer Crop Science. Tell us about the journey as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so my background, um, I was born in Germany, um, studied there, bachelor, master, PhD, 
And as many know, Germany has not the best weather in the world, so it's, it's pretty rainy, especially the university I was at. Uh, so that's, it's, I, I always say it's uh, partially the reason I wanted to go to a really nice warm place after finishing my, uh, my PhD. And so indeed, yeah, I, uh, I came to, to California to do my postdoc um, here in, in the Bay Area. But also, already in Germany, during my studies, I actually um, was the co-founder of a startup. And um, as such, you know about San Francisco being the mecca of startups. Uh, so that was another big big reason to, to actually move here. What was that startup that you were doing? So this was in the browser game space. At the time, you know, Facebook browser games was yeah, yeah. still really big. Uh, it probably still is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was it was in this realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then here after my postdoc, um, I joined Bear Crop Science, uh, where I then uh, eventually met Kishore. And um, basically, all my background, my studies uh, were all focused on um, industrial microorganisms. So um, it's, it's can be tell us about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're both doing that industrial microorganisms. Right. Do you want to start? Um, well, we we were. We are basically doing uh, soil microbiome studies. So we were trying, like, the way we came up with this idea is we were working in uh, plant microbiomes where we were identifying bacteria that make the plants grow better or help them fight uh, fungal diseases. So awesome. we realized that, you know, Patrick has a patent on that and I have some coming up. Uh, but we realized, okay, if this works for the plants, it should work for humans as well. And, you know, a, we, we realized that we could rebalance the oral bacteria from a disease to a healthy state by introducing a healthy bacteria. Yeah. So we were doing the same thing for the plants. We thought that's translatable to humans. I mean, they're already working on gut, but nobody's focusing on the oral health. Yes, and yes. oral health is a serious concern. And it's part of the GI tract. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. the opening, right? Yes, the opening. Exactly. Yes. So, interesting. Yeah, but but um, I, I just wanted to say along the way, so it started with what uh, add, add, oh, adding uh, healthy bacteria to plant eco soil ecosystems, uh, and now it's like, what? Is, how can that be applied to humans? Yeah. So um, maybe two more words before that. So the, the rhizosphere, which is really the the microbiome of the plant. The what? The rhizosphere. Rhizo uh, rhizosphere. Right. Yeah. Is the soil. The soil. Like, that's like the microbiome of the plant. Exactly. It's the first time I've ever heard that yeah. analogy. That's, that's interesting. Tech term. Um, so the rhizosphere is a much more complex environment than the the mouth actually. So there are thousands, over thousands of microbes known to exist um, around mm. the rhizosphere. The human uh, microbiome has on average only like 700 different species uh, at each in individual. Like overall, there are also a few thousands. In the mouth. In the mouth, yeah. 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 And, and so we really thought, um, basically we, we tackled a more difficult problem in the past when we were working at the rhizosphere. So now um, translating all this knowledge and yes. um, you know, the algorithms we, we have developed in the past to the oral microbiome would make a lot of sense and actually uh, allow us to be even more impactful with that because it is a, um, a simpler but still very complex um, field. So then what was the moment for you two when you were there doing all of this, the, the, the rhizosphere of, of the microbiome of plants and you were learning about this, making your own algorithms, figuring this out, and then how did you guys go? Let's let's do let's do this. You know, how'd that happen? Okay, all right. So um, so myself, um, I I am, am sometimes plaque with with cavities, um, whereas Kishore has like perfect oral health. So you know he wouldn't even have to brush. He, he does it, but mm -hmm. uh, he wouldn't have to. <laughs> you know, um, he he wouldn't get cavities. And so the reason is um, that his oral microbiome is just um, a very balanced and healthy one. Whereas mine seem to be um, suboptimal. What does a healthy versus an imbalanced uh, oral uh, microbiome look like? Yeah, is that what do you call it? An oral yeah. biome? Oral or? microbiome. O oral yeah. microbiome. Okay. So um, it is not 
uh, like one specific target state where you have a certain mm. number of microbes. Mm -hmm. There's basically an infinite number of, um, of states that yes. uh, could exist. Yes. Um, but there are what, what the disease states usually have in common is that there is an overabundance of certain detrimental bacteria. And Whereas do we know which ones that is? There are certain um, strains known. There's Streptococcus mutants, for example, which is associated with tooth decay. But uh -huh. there are various others, uh -huh. and uh, this field is not exhaustively known, actually. So it's, there's still research going on uh, as cool. we speak. Um, as we take samples of our poop, may we also take samples of our oral microbiome to you know, figure that out as, at the same time? Seems like a good idea. Uh, exactly, and it's obviously much more accessible um, yeah. and <laughs> easier for people to donate yes, uh, samples yes, to, yes. to uh, this cause. Yeah. I will ask you that later. I will ask you if you are interested in um, taking uh, oral as well. Um, okay, so then the moment though, uh, when you were like, aha, let's, you, you were talking about the oral health differences right. between you two. Yeah, right. So, so um, I think it was one day I came actually back from a, from a dentist visit and was just a little frustrated about hearing that there might be another cavity here and there. Although, you know, I, I floss and brush and, and do everything you possibly can do. And, um, you know, we were just uh, sitting over a beer and uh, thought, well, you know, we do this as a day job uh, to figure out what are the healthy microbes for plants. And we put them on the seeds and they grow strong and, and vigorous and are um, protected. So why are we not doing this for the oral yes. microbiome too? Yes. Um, in essence, it was really like um, self-interest at first. Um, how can I improve my own situation that maybe of, of my family and friends? Um, and then very soon this idea grew, grew much bigger because um, you know, the, most people don't know it, but there are 95% of Americans who suffer from some sort of oral condition, um, which is a staggering number. And, and what would, out of the 95% that suffer some oral condition, what are the top oral conditions that people usually suffer from? Yeah, so the top oral conditions are um, tooth decay, gum disease, and bad breath. Okay, now, um, okay. Uh, I think people are familiar with bad breath, um, maybe not so, so much the causes, um, but then the gum disease, people kind of can see the gum lining receding over time. Um, and then, gum yeah. Gum lining receding, I Go ahead. Gum, gum line receding, I don't think has got to do with, uh, I mean, we're not sure, but you have gum disease and that also has some implications in bad breath. Mm. But mm. I would say the, uh, like the overarching that there's three conditions, bad breath, tooth decay, and gum disease. And then again, within gum disease, there is gingivitis, periodontitis, and there's like a bunch of things. Whoa. And, and for each thing, there is a different microbiome that causes these conditions, right? Like for example, Patrick was alluding to the Streptococcus mutans that causes um, caries or tooth decay. But everybody has Streptococcus mutans. But there is certain conditions and certain uh, presence of other bacteria that makes it pathogenic or that have, I mean, that causes all sorts of, uh, uh, it makes it pathogenic and causes other d disease conditions around in the mouth. So we have to identify what kind of uh, consortia of bacteria are causing health and disease. And okay, so yeah, that's, that's, that's a key there. Okay, what consortia of bacteria cause the, the tooth decay and gum disease, bad breath? And then, and then what are the, the, the ones that cause f f good health? Good health. Mm -hmm. And so then what have been your uh, tools of analysis for that? So Patrick can talk about the tools. So, so besides, I want to start, besides Kishore and myself, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, another team of co-founders. So there are four of us in total, um, David Drake and Jeffrey Banners. They are both uh, long-term professors at the University of Iowa College of Dentistry. Mm -hmm. Both individually have over 30 years of experience in wow. analyzing the oral microbiology mm. uh, of humans. So um, with, with their help, we were able to um, basically dig really deep into the literature and uh, understand which micro what is known, mm -hmm. then which of the known microbes would act well together. This is when we started experimenting. Um, and then eventually came up with a proprietary solution of five uh, strains that really work synergistically very effectively to fight bad breath. And the five proprietary st strains that you 
came up with to fight bad breath that these fight bad breath and gum disease and tooth decay or just the, just the bad breath? Yeah. So this, our first product, which we will talk a little bit later, I guess, um, is targeted for bad breath. So yes. this is specifically okay. designed for, for bad breath. What does the tongue look like at a microscopic level? It's like little bristles, right? Yeah. Like little things next to each other like this? It, so it is a it is a surface riddled with a ca um, crevices and crevices. Uh, it's a very rough surface. This is yeah. also why, for example, if you take mouthwashes, you will never be able to, or even tongue scrapers, you will never be able to remove all bacteria from your tongue. They are always you know, hiding down deep yeah. down in the, yeah, in the yeah. crevices, and they will grow back from there especially with mouthwashes, that, yeah. that can be a problem because detrimental strains tend to grow back faster than uh, you know, beneficial ones. ones. And huh. then you are usually often left off worse than you were before. It, it, it's, it's like there is a constant state of war in the mouth. So there is different, mm. think of all these bacteria as different tribes and mm. they're just uh, fighting for competition in the mouth. Mm -hmm. um, like they have their own weapons, they have their own antibiotics to suppress the other ones. So sometimes they work together, they make alliances with, yeah. with other species of bacteria, work together for the health of the mouth, but also there'll be other um, alliances where they work together uh, for the diseased state of the mouth. So they become pathogenic. So they recruit other species, both for disease and health. So it's, you can think of the mouth as like a war zone. Yeah. Where like this, there's this good and bad guys constantly at war and they make alliances and they have different uh, set of weaponry. Some has a better antibiotic, some are like voracious at, uh, uh, you know, eating up all the resources. This literally sounds like the evolution of humanity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and that, that's constantly happening in your mouth, in the, in the gut, in the, in the, gut on the skin, yes, everywhere. Yes. So yeah, even in really the house too, like you know, uh, like for example, if you if you close all your windows, and there's the reason why I think you know our elders say open your windows mm -hmm. is to let the new bacteria come in, so that there's not one kind of few types of bacteria that is overtaking the entire day. Yeah. So you're maintaining a healthy balance mm -hmm. uh, of the bacteria in in everywhere, like in the mouth. That's why you brush and your fresh, teeth. Fresh oxygen too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, with so, yeah, the air comes yes. the bacteria. Yeah. Okay, um, you, were, you were just going somewhere, though that's why you were saying, that's why you brush your teeth, because you open up new sp space for new bacteria? Yeah, when you're brushing the teeth, you are uh, removing the, you know, whatever is on the upper surface of the teeth or the tongue and making space for others, exactly. So you're not letting one particular type or a few particular types just outgrow and, and outgrow the others and become pathogenic. So that's like the physical effect. I mean, like physically, you're removing them. So if you use our probiotic, what happens is they are, you know, they're probiotics. Their natural environment is the mouth. So they actually proliferate faster and make sure that the oh. other ones are not coming in and occupying the oral space. How did you pick the five or six strains? It, like Patrick said, um, the literature. Also, the literature. Uh, we also have two professors, co founders. Yes. Who are uh, who have over 30 years of experience in this space, so they helped us with this uh, formulation. And the formulation now does the do you do you list the you don't list them here because that's the IP right. So so they are listed. They and are. They are listed. just not listed uh, in the exact ratios we designed them to be um, in the tablet. Proprietary probiotic blend, right? Exactly. Streptococcus, Streptococcus salivarius. That's correct. M18. Streptococcus salivarius K12. Lacto, Lactococcus lactis. Lactobacillus ruteri. And Lactobacillus salivarius. And you see that uh, three of those have salivarius in it. So their yeah. natural environment is the saliva. So they found, they first found them in the saliva. So, so they are, so for example, I'm an Indian. I thrive better in India, right? So their natural environment is the, is the saliva. So they grow better than the others, the pathogenic yes. ones. And, yes. and, and they are better at using up the resources in the mouth, depriving the the other pathogenic bacteria from getting any resources or foothold in the mouth. Interesting. 
and then the this is a uh, 103 milligrams of the probiotic blend and then uh, what percentage of the entire probiotic supplement is that 103 milligrams do we know how much is each one is weight. so are you asking about the weight of a single the tablet? weight yeah like what percentage of the actual tablet is just the probiotic blend and then what percentage of it is xylitol microcrystalline cellulose the other um, stuff? The, I actually at the top of my head I don't know um, we, I have the data of course but of course yeah I, I don't know the top see of the, my head. this is this is my yeah. job is yeah. to is to ask these questions and now you're like I'm gonna know that <laughs> so interesting now can you so uh, the ones that don't say salivarius salivarius uh, lactis reitery right what are the, what are those so the, the naming uh, oftentimes suggests their origin, um, not, not always. Um, so these, all these strains are what's um, in the industry called grass, so that means gener generally recognized as safe. Uh -huh. um, so they all originate from you know, healthy human um, subjects. Um, not all of them have been named salivarius because similar strains have been found in other environments before, and then you name them after the next closest uh, species or strain mm. and that's why the names are uh, not necessarily all ending in salivarius and then how do you know that having how many times have you now tested these five versus adding a sixth one versus taking one out yeah so so there, there were several iterations uh, through which we've uh, we've went um so not all, not all probiotics, uh, you know, synergize very well together. You know, mm. Some might even antagonize mm. themselves. Um, so we found that this this combination is the most efficacious. Let and 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 that might also be true for different populations of people, as in my oral microbiome is different from someone across the world, right? So oralta might have to come in different uh, for different cultures, different of people. That possible? Yeah, so you, you're talking basically, you're, you're sketching now on a, surf, on a topic that's really interesting. So the, um, the microbiome of every individual is basically uh, like, like a fingerprint. 95% different, right? It, it's uh, like a fingerprint, basically. It, yeah. It's really unique to you, but it just, uh, the, the difference with the fingerprint is that it's really it's staying for the life of you, or for your lifetime. The, the microbiome is actually constantly also evolving and changing. So if you eat one day, if you drink hot tea, mm -hmm. and you sample before and after drinking hot tea, you will probably get different results. Even worse, if you take an antibiotic because of some other condition, after you're taking the antibiotic, you rapidly change the mi microbiome in your mouth, in your totally, gut, totally. Uh, wherever it comes yeah, in contact yeah. with. And other things are in, um, impacting your microbiome, like obviously your eating habits, your oral hygiene routines, yes, yes. even if you have things like you open, you sleep with an open mouth, it uh, changes. That's um, an interesting one. Like That's various things, if that. you do a lot of sport exercises, how much water you drink, how much water if you you're drink. smoking, alcoholic, Damn. All these things uh, rapidly impact the microbiome. Yeah, that's like a dozen variables right there that are really right. Yeah. Which you know, which kind of then the next question would be: So how do you know this works for most people? Yes, and uh, and the answer is, um, this was designed specifically to target the strains that are known to cause uh, bad breath. So if you have bad breath, most likely you contain strains. You have strains that uh, these strains that we provide uh, target or uh, fight. So regardless of what kind of condition you have, yeah. um, there's a high probability that uh, this consortium of bacteria is going to be efficacious against uh, your condition. How does one measure if they have bad breath? Because when everyone wakes up in the morning, don't we all have bad breath? Yeah, so there, there are uh, various reasons for bad breath, and we also want to distinguish clearly bad breath from um, you know, eating food that causes bad breath totally. because of the food being smelled. Totally. So we're not, we're not addressing that. This is like a, a temporary condition, like yes. garlic. If you eat garlic, you, you totally. smell like garlic. So we're not going to do anything about that. Um, but what we're really f focusing is kind of the, the chronic halitosis, so yeah, that, that yeah. people have um, constantly, and also when they wake up in the morning. So one other thing to touch up on what you said is uh, regards to 
like how the dynamic the microbiome is. But for each disease condition, we also believe there is a core microbiome in the sense like there is certain uh, certain set of consortia of bacteria that definitely occur in, in, in a certain disease condition. So if we address and target those bacteria, we would be, with a, with our own consortia of bacteria, yes, yes. we would be able to do that. Interesting. But, but for the rest, you know, that's the core microbiome. And that's, that's the core set consortia of bacteria that cause that particular condition. So if we can target them, we will be able to uh, mitigate that condition. But there will be a lot of other uh, species of bacteria floating around in the mouth. It got nothing to do with the condition. So back to the war analogy, are you sending soldiers in to combat the bad? Is that kind of the... Yeah, we're, we're, we're sending the soldiers in, uh, but also that's their, uh, that's their home. So we're sending the soldiers in to their own country. To their own country. Yeah, exactly. and, and, and then what they're doing is they're kind of taking out the bad actors in yes. their country. Okay, and the then, ones that and then, cause the gum disease, tooth decay, bad breath. And then proliferating, breeding, outbreeding the others. And, outbreeding okay. and outcompeting okay. for resources. So then, so then the, um, this has to be taken t twice a day. It's chewable tablet daily, uh, and then take it twice a day, morning and evening. Avoid food and drink for 30 minutes, so let it dissolve in your mouth, so over the period of time. And then, is this a, when is this available for the market to, and what kind of testing do you, do you have to go through? FDA, right? Yeah, food and drug? So, so your first question is, uh, when, is it, when is it available, right? So it's going to be available. Well, let's answer them in reverse, so the testing for, or, yeah, yeah. Okay, to, yeah. so testing Patrick will answer yeah. the testing board. Okay. So you're asking whether you have to be tested in order to um, take those? Yeah. So the reason you don't have to do this, this is a dietary supplement, so it is not a drug. And, and as such, um, you know, it is, yeah, it is supplementing your regular diet and it's helping If I you. make cookies and I want to sell them at Whole Foods, I literally just have to bring my cookies to the buyer at Whole Foods. So, yeah, so then similarly, yeah, okay, dietary well, supplement. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, a, it is a acknowledged class of the FDA. It is not a drug, though. So yeah, yeah. there's really a class of products called dietary supplements. But then the FDA does have certain, like, measurements on, like, the meat at the grocery store, right? They have these certain foods get, make sure that they're safe at the grocery store. Right. Yeah, that kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier. So that the dietary supplements, the, the, the if you have probiotics in there, um, they need to be generally recognized as safe, so grass um, approved, if you will. Um, and so, obviously, our strains uh, adhere cool. to that. Um, cool. And there are some other um, there are some other regulations when it comes to you know the supplement label, um, certain things that are written on the on the bottle needs to need to be compliant. And then the, we do want to see this then on the uh, on the checkouts right next to like the Tic Tacs and all that other kind of gums and the gum and all that other kind of stuff. So like, what's the distribution? When is it available? Yeah, all that good stuff too. Yeah, so it will be available in uh, December. We're directly launching through our website. Awesome. So people will be able to buy at www.oralta.com from December onwards. Got to yeah. love that uh, six-character domain name. Yeah. That's so good. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. And we would like you to enough to get in, uh, get the .com domain as well. Yeah, and then we'll have, uh, we'll have to keep some Oralta on our, on our shelf of product exactly. with all the other ones. And so we'll pass it all off to the different people that walk in through the door. Yeah. Yeah, December, so, that's quick. Yeah, yeah, it's coming down in December. And, and, and to... <laughs> And, and also to actually reiterate what Patrick said, uh, it's all, it again comes back to the work type of scenario. So there is like few consortia of bad actors that are common across all the people that have ba bad breath. And we have a consortia of bacteria that will fight these consortia of bacteria that cause bad breath. So, so it, you know, it'll, it is efficacious for the majority of people. So it will work for most uh, people. Can I, can I take one right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, you, I mean, it, does it take some time to dissolve in your mouth? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. How long does it usually take to dissolve? Like five, ten minutes? Four to eight minutes. Yeah, that's fine. 
Oh, four to eight minutes when I when I when I try, you know, I, I used to do it like every day, and it, it took it took me three minutes. Maybe I have too much saliva in my mouth. You have lots of <laughs> lots of saliva in your mouth. Let's yeah. show as as well as we can what. Sing again. Here's Oralta, and then here's what the. Cool. Nice. Pop it in. It's a cherry limeade flavor that you have, I guess. Cherry limeade? Uh-huh. Tastes but, great. But our, our uh, first... Uh, cherry limeade xylitol, right? Yep. It has, it has the xylitol is a sugar. Mm -hmm. But um, our first batch has only mint flavor in it. We don't... Okay. So there's no cherry limeade or orange or anything. We tried these three things, but our first uh, product that's launching mm -hmm. this December is we'll just mint, mint flavor. Mm -hmm. so, but you are, what you're trying right now is cherry limeade. Which 2019 at some point will be on the website as yeah. well. I like the model of distribution through website. Mm -hmm. Is there also interest in the 7-Elevens and the Costcos and whatnot of the world? Yeah, so so subsequent, like first we'll be selling through our website and trying to build a strong brand, you know, uh, strong DTC brand. And after that, we want to go to Amazon. Mm -hmm. and subsequently go to uh, all these retail pharmaceutical chains. Mm -hmm. We have quite a bit of interest right now. Um, we will probably go that route, but not in the next uh, few months. Yeah. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, retail pharmaceutical chains that have approached us to actually to see if we would be interested in placing on their shelves. Uh, we haven't, I mean, you know, it, we're talking to them, but uh, it won't happen in the next few months. What do we expect a, a 60 capsule bottle to retail for on your website? So it, it costs $39.97. 40 bucks. 40 bucks. So like 65 cents a tablet or something, a chewable tablet, something like that. Yeah. Cool. Around that. Okay. But yeah. The, the, That's the, like the, two bucks a day or a, a buck of 50 a day or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, a lot of people who don't have bad breath don't realize it, but bad breath is a serious issue. It, it affects people's social, personal, and, and professional lives. You know, like, you only know it if you experience it. You know, it's, it, mm -hmm. it causes severe uh, self-esteem and, and self-confidence issues. That's people, a good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, 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 it has a strong psychological effect, too. Mm -hmm. um, so. And I think what I alluded to earlier is also a point that, that is important to understand that this is not a mint or a mouthwash or something that temporarily masks your yep. bad breath. Yep. So this is really going to the source of the problem mm -hmm. and trying to naturally shift your oral microbiome towards a healthy state. Mm -hmm. So that also means if you know for a day don't take it, you don't see a difference and you still have good breath. Mm -hmm. Because the microbes live in your mouth. They actively mm -hmm. cover all surfaces and prevent the bad bacteria to adhere and um, basically st start growing again. And this effect, uh, you know, depends on the person, but might last uh, several days to weeks. So it is, it's a very different concept uh, than just buying totally. a box of Altoids or something. Yes, yes. No one else is going at the source of the bad breath with a chewable tablet. Is that right? No one else is doing that yet? That, that's exactly right. Yeah. I thought this was great. I just tried it. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a good formulation. Good job. Um, so I think we covered a pretty good amount of what we needed to talk about. Um, something I guess that I thought was, was interesting to mention to you guys, um, to ask you guys about is the f like the further future for Aralta? Um, what does the the you know the further further future look like? How many uh, is this? You know what are the other Aralta products that you expect to make? Um, yeah, what's your roadmap look like for a little more down the line? So our uh, f you know our first product for bad breath, which is in right in your hands, is is launching direct to consumer in December. And we are working on another probiotic for uh, gum disease, which will be launching in Q1 of 2019. 
And the third one for 2, 3K, which we're launching in uh, Q2 of 2019. But what we're also- As different chewable tablets that have different compositions of the healthy exactly. strains. Exactly, that is correct. Okay. Interesting. Uh, but, but what we're also trying to do is mm -hmm. we're also trying to build an Oralta AI platform. So some select customers who buy through our website will get an option of sending their saliva samples. What we do in a mailer. So if they send us the saliva samples back, we do a sequencing of their saliva samples and send them their reports. So the advantage of for them awesome. to exactly. So advantage for them to sending us the saliva samples is a custom formula. No, no, no. There's not custom formula okay. yet. Right. So maybe so, down the line, maybe. So we're doing free oral microbiome analysis for them. Oh, so complete. Wait, free. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Yep. So, so hmm. and we'll do a free oral microbiome analysis for them, but there's some select customers that uh, that buy through our website. Oh, and oh, okay. So once you're a customer for a bit, you can get a free uh, saliva microbiome yeah, oral they, microbiome. So, so there'll yeah. be an option, like let's say you, you are a customer, right? You're buying through our website and, and we'll give an uh, option to send their saliva samples and know more about their oral microbiome. So, so you are a, you do a lot of science podcasts. You might be interested in knowing how your oral microbiome is. Totally, I have the gut sequence. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we will send you a saliva sampling kit, and you can send your saliva samples to us. We sequence your saliva samples, and then what we do is we send you back the reports. So you have this and this particular species of bacteria in overabundance, and and the other species in less abundance, and and what we what we'll do eventually is you know we build a database of this, say, uh, samples, and also the sequencing of the microbial profiles of the samples. And what we want to do is eventually use this database to design new therapeutics and refine existing probiotics. This will serve as the core of our uh, future products. So right now, we have these three things coming out from the experience of the two other co-founders, Jeff and David but all the future uh, products will be designed by this AI platform that we are building. So. And one, and, and one, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just a few things to add on. Um, we, we also wanna, uh, wanna learn a little bit more about the people who would send us um, saliva samples. Um, because what's really important is not only their uh, microbiome in, in terms of DNA sequencing results, but also what are their habits looking like, you know? What, what is their oral hygiene habit? What's mm -hmm. their eating habits? Mm -hmm. Do they have maybe certain um, you know, conditions that in the long run we can correlate with a uh, imbalance of oral microbiome uh, bacteria so that uh, we can really f um, yeah, correlate health status and uh, habits with microbiome data, which then really allows us to fine tune and even develop more targeted probiotics to help as you, for example, earlier said, different uh, ethnicities or you know um, various other uh, subsectors, um, so that they will have much more uh, effic efficacious probiotics uh, than maybe possibly, which is currently possible. And, and, and there is also a recent body of evidence that suggests the link between oral microbiome and systemic diseases like Alzheimer's, uh, you can, and also preterm births, cardiovascular disease. So this database will help us, you know, connect all these dots. So how the oral microbiome plays a role in systemic diseases as well. Yeah. Hmm. Now, give give me one more time with all of the oral microbiomes that you will have, all that information, then you can target, help people of different ethnicities, of different compositions, of different bad, bad oral microbiomes. Or even geographies, because like for example, in India, there'll be probably more vegetarians versus here, right? right? So they might need a little bit different probiotic versus the mm. people in the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there, is there something else? Wait, I'm, I also realized I can't drink water for 30 minutes now. So what's the reason you need it to sit, set into 
you don't want it to wash down. You want, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so ideally, what we recommend is um, people after their regular oral hygiene routine in the morning and evening, take the tablet, let it dissolve, and then try to go sleep right away. Let basically the good bacteria rehydrate as they are uh, in a dormant state right now. Let oh. them basically rehydrate, start the metabolism, and th one of the first things they, they will do express certain uh, proteins that allow them to adhere to the surface of the mouth and thereby starting to compete right away with the existing bad yeah, bacteria. Yeah. And, and subsequently they will um, go through other modes of action to um, you know, start fighting the, the bad bacteria. Um, and that just takes some time. So uh, if you would, um, for example, just swallow this tablet, yeah. you would not get any health benefits. Any health benefits, yeah. This is, this is very different from uh, normal. Most of the time, people associate probiotics with gut health. You kind of want to swoosh it around your mouth a little right. even. Like move it around from the back right. corners. And right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And, and, and that's exactly what we suggest. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, one thing we observed consistently is the most ideal time would be to take it right before going to bed and that gives them six to eight hours to grow and colonize the mouth. That's a great point. And, and the thing is, and during that time when you wake up in the morning, there is no longer any biofilm on the teeth and the tongue because these guys who are natural to the mouth are proliferating and growing in the mouth. So you wake up in the morning feeling clean actually. That's a really interesting test too is to uh, when I go to bed, take one, wake up in the morning, and just, you know, <laughs> give, that a, give that a go. Yeah. yeah so, so what you just did is actually, um, the, most people do this to try to test their own breath. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's actually been proven to be very inefficient. Totally. Um, so what you just, just to like you can't really smell your own breath right, that exactly, well. Yeah, exactly. So so your nose is kind of used to the you yeah. know the smell coming out. So yeah, it's neutral. Yeah, yeah. So what you really want to do if you really want to know about your breath and you're alone, because the best test is really st have, have a significant other or f friend test to it. smell. Yeah. The, you have to remember from the previous day what it smelled like. Right. Or but, bottle it up. You, you can do it yourself if you, so the best thing is you actually lick. Um, oh, to lick. Like your, the, yeah. the palm of your hand here mm -hmm. and wait maybe 20 seconds and then, and then smell. Yeah, mine doesn't smell that good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to take yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you could come down to our lab and we'll do the test for you. So we have something called a halimeter, which measures the volatile sulfur compounds in your breath. And we can tell you uh, how about the threshold or how bad your breath, breath is, or or how good your breath is? How how halimeter? Halimeter. 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 Which measures the halitosis. The halitosis. Halitosis is the is the medical uh, word Remember for bad breath. Remember when I was making breath. fun of all yeah. of you guys at the uh, uh, two days ago at the Indie Bio roast because I was just you guys say words like this. Oh yeah, halitosis. Yeah. You know, you just the biotech people are so funny because they just. I actually prefer a, a bad breath, tooth decay, and gum disease because yeah. it, it's better to communicate that way and and people yeah. really understand yeah, they, the situation. If you say gingivitis, oh, they don't know what it, you know. A lot of yeah. people don't understand what it is. But a, but a ha halitosis is what again? The it's the bad breath. So it's, it's, the, it's the medical term for bad the breath. The medical term for it. Halitosis. Yeah. Interesting. Halitosis. Yeah, because sometimes it also makes you feel like, oh, I know what halitosis is. And then you get that superiority ego thing. And you, if you say bad breath, you get, you know, 95% of people know what that is. Halitosis, 1% of people. I, I think yeah. in Spanish it's called alimiento, which is halitosis. Alimiento? I think so. Interesting. Um, do you guys, did we cover, was there something else that you thought was important to, to cover on the show? Um, the direct-to-consumer launch is happening this December. Uh, please go to www.oralta.com. Links in bio. Uh, exactly. And uh, you click on shop and we will get you, we'll send you the product. And just take one pill in the morning, one pill in the evening, and you'll be able to see the difference in just two weeks. Uh, go ahead and buy and try our product. Maybe we can do like a couple dollar code, maybe like a 10% off code, something like that. Yeah, so we will s send it to you. Maybe you can add that to your uh, yeah, YouTube. 10% off yeah. and we'll maybe do the code simulation. Fantastic. Will be the name and then we'll add that to the bio as well. Cool. That'd simulation viewers will get a 10% discount. Awesome, that's cool.
you, you might want to mention that that you can actually already buy the product as a, uh, a pre-purchase um, oh, yeah, on good, the website good. right now. Oh, so, sweet. Um, and we have already a few hundred people actually uh, on, on pre-order. Perfect. So um, if you want to join that group. That's good stuff. That would be great. So yeah, we'll throw the code in. It's already ready for pre-order first batch. We'll hopefully get to people before Christmas. That's the plan. Definitely, Definitely before Christmas. Awesome. Um, what a fun time this has been. Yeah, do you have another? Yeah, well, you'll be eating all the uh, nice food during Christmas, so save yourself some, get yourself some uh, fresh breath using our Oralta fresh breath probiotic. I love it. This has been so enlightening. Thank you very much for building what you're building and for teaching us about it. This has been a lot of fun. Ladies, if, you're, if your significant other has bad breath, ask him to buy this product, Oralta.com. <laughs> or buy for him. <laughs> it is so funny. Yeah, same thing. Same thing for uh, gentlemen. If your lady has bad breath, yeah, yeah. A, a, a son or daughter, if your parent has bad breath, yeah. Take your allowance money. Take your allowance money. This has been a lot of fun. Allowance money. Thank you, Patrick. What a pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We would greatly appreciate it. Go check out Aralta. Also, um, if you guys had a good time, give us a comment below. That'll let us know your thoughts about what you think about the product service. Uh, go and build the future. Go and manifest your dreams into the world. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Peace out. <laughs>